October 14th was Indigenous Peoples Day, and if you didn't know that, you need to go home to your calendar and scratch out the words Columbus Day and write that in. <laughs> so we thought this would be a great time to bring out an actual member of the Native community and friend of the show. Please give a warm welcome to Joey Clift! <laughs> I just took a DNA test, turns out I'm a hundred percent that bitch Even when I'm crazy, yeah, I got four problems as a human in me Hey everybody, my name is Joey Clift and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about where I came from So, uh, thank you, big woo for my history <laughs> um, So, I took a really long and winding path to get to where I am today I'm an enrolled member of the Cowlitz Indian Tribe, and I grew up on the Tulalip Indian Reservation in Washington oh, State. Yeah. yeah, wait, do we have like, anybody that knows the Cowlitz Indian Tribe and Tulalip Indian Reservation? No, oh, cool. <laughs> so, um, I, had, uh, I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up, um, but I knew that I wanted to make people laugh. So uh, the way that that manifested itself in high school is that I made a lot of like sarcastic jokes and comments in the back of the class I did it so much that in one quarter, one of my teachers made me move my desk seven times. Uh, the final time, she made me move my desk into the corner with my desk facing the wall. Uh, it was at that moment that I knew I wanted to work in comedy, I guess. <laughs> um, unfortunately, uh, being Native American, um, there aren't really any like high-profile Native American comedians in the media, so I legit didn't think that I was allowed to work in the entertainment industry. So I went to college for the next best thing, to be a small market television weather guy. <laughs> uh, do I have any interest in reporting the weather? No, not really. But if you think about it, small market weather guys, uh, they usually get to crack a few jokes. They get to be kind of kooky characters. So I thought to myself, oh, that's like a realistic way that I'm gonna be able to get paid to make people laugh. So I really, I dove in uh, with both feet in college got really involved in my college uh, radio station, DJing a bunch of shows, uh, did a lot of like really bad college stand-up, and uh, did a lot of college TV. And I remember thinking to myself while I was doing all of this, that this on-camera and on-stage experience would be a really good preparation for my future career reporting the weather in a small town. <laughs> uh, I had no idea. I did so much college TV that um, a college TV show that I wrote, produced, and co-starred in, actually ended up winning like a National College Comedy Award. I beat out people at Ithaca, Harvard, and a ton of Ivy League schools. And I remember thinking to myself, when I got this like trophy in the mail, that uh, this was gonna look really cool on my news desk in Post Falls, Idaho. <laughs> it's a real place that I almost got a job at. <laughs> Um, fortunately, uh, a bunch of my professors saw what I was going through, and they kind of separately pulled me aside and said, hey, you know you could just work in comedy, right? And I gave a very cool, really? I was shocked, this did not cross my mind. Um, so uh, this was about 10 years ago. Since then, I moved to Los Angeles, got really involved in the local improv and sketch comedy scenes. Um, I've written for shows on Cartoon Network, DreamWorks, Nickelodeon, a ton of other places. And most importantly, um, I created a Facebook group for LA comedians to share pictures of their cats. Uh, it's called the, yeah. It's called the LA Underground Cat Network. It has over 10,000 members. Uh, it's very popular. Uh, if you like cats, you should join it. Uh, do I have any cat people in the audience? Yeah, I'm a big cat person, they're great. Um, I'm really proud of my career and all that I've accomplished. But something that I've noticed is that a big reason that I didn't really see a ton of Native American people on TV growing up is that there just aren't a lot of Natives in the entertainment industry. Um, it's so bad that uh, usually when I get hired for a job, I'll give a producer like a, my tribal ID card for like tax paperwork ID purposes. And without fail, they'll always tell me, wow, I've never seen a tribal ID card before. Except for a couple of weeks ago, when a producer hired me and said, this is the second tribal ID card I've ever seen. Yeah, that's right, I immediately was like, Who, what other native did you hire? Uh, native Hollywood is super small, probably friends with this person. Turns out I was, they're very nice, I'm glad they got a job too. Um, uh, I love making comedy, but more than that, I really love helping marginalized groups feel seen, and I hope that in my career, I can help convince funny Native American kids currently growing up on reservations that don't really feel like they have a ton of options that maybe working in the entertainment industry is a realistic career goal. And plus, I need help from other Natives to help me explain to everybody that 
Just because you got a DNA test in the mail that says that you're 5% Indian, that doesn't mean that you can or should be able to speak from a position of authority on Native American issues. This happens so often, guys. It is very annoying. Uh, side note, um, my favorite thing that non-natives do when they find out that I'm native is when they immediately ask me what my opinions are about Elizabeth Warren. Uh, this usually happens at parties, at bars like this, and in other situations where I don't really want to dive into a deeply controversial and complex issue. It's like if I were to march into a white person's house and immediately ask them their opinions about Jason Mraz. Uh, <laughs> Equally, equally controversial figures in uh, both cultures. Uh, I also guarantee that uh, now that I've said this, I'm jinxing myself, and in the bar after this show, at least two people are gonna ask me my opinions about Elizabeth Warren. It's gonna be very annoying. <laughs> so I'm just uh, I'm putting that out there as a jinx for myself. Um, anyway, I'll leave you with this. If you've ever wanted to try something, but you didn't, and instead you decided to go to school to be a small market weather person, uh, I just want to say you don't have to do that. I'm living proof. There are other options. You do not have to move to Post Falls, Idaho. Uh, also, um, if you've ever found yourself talking to a member of a marginalized group, and you want to ask them a bunch of hyper-specific and personal questions, maybe Google it instead? I mean, it's not that hard. Google it. You have it on your phone. It's easy. Also, if you like cats, you should really join my cat Facebook group. It's called the LA Your Own Cat Network. It's super cute. It's real fun. Anyway, my name is Joey Clift. That's my time. Joey Clift, everybody!